Okay, we're back here live at VMworld 2013. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. And we are here at VMworld 2013. We're here in Moscone South in San Francisco. Definitely stop by, we're at the street level and see us. Mike Keeler is here. He's the COO of EMC Global Services and a CUBE alum. Mike, welcome back to theCUBE. Hey, thanks, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, we're hearing a lot about uh, the industry transforming. Yep. Uh, Pat uh, Gelsinger gave a talk today. Just talked a lot about you know, the, the heart and soul of, of VMware, but you know, also talked about how customers over the last decade have really transformed their infrastructure. And I know that's a topic that you guys talk a lot about. You're trying to help customers, you know, move things along. So tell us what's new in, in, in EMC Global Services, and then we'll get into the whole transformation thing and what you're seeing with customers. So, so thanks again for ha having me out. Uh, I mean, what's new in uh, EMC Global Services, it really is all about IT transformation. So this, the conversation for us has moved uh, much, much further into how you talk about IT and changing the, the fundamentals of the rigid structures that we built up over many, many years in corporate IT. And what's happening is things like VM, VMware and virtualization across the entire stack are creating new opportunities for business to actually go other places to have their IT needs met. And it's creating a dynamic where the core IT organizations have fundamentally got to think about how they transform how they, their people, their processes, and their technology. And so we're spending a lot of time with a whole lot of offerings new in the marketplace to help IT organizations actually embark on that journey and accelerate that journey. So I live in an old house, and uh, when I want to update yeah. that house, I get really nervous. You know, yeah. if I want to put in a new kitchen or something, I say, oh, I got to be without a kitchen for four or five months. Yeah, and, the dough, and the dough you're going to have to pay. <laughs> yeah, say, oh, I, got to, I got to rip and replace that kitchen. And, you know, we're, we're going to be washing dishes in the bathtub. Yep. And oh, how does, I mean, the analogy applies to IT. How do you, you, know, you talk, the, the vendor community makes it sound so simple. How do you mask that complexity when you go through transformations with customers? So, so that, that is a very fair analogy. Um, and that's where you start to see some of the uh, emerging companies who don't have infrastructure, they stand it up overnight, and overnight they seem like the right answer for IT. And to your point, uh, IT, IT organizations over time, it's like a fine house. And that renovation, you've got to start room by room. So it's not an overnight transformation, but it is more than just the technology, because it is about the people and it is about the processes. One of the things we see a lot of is uh, on the process and the people side, that's the trick that gets missed, missed a lot. So IT organizations want to change, they want to be flexible, but at the same time, like everybody, they say, well, what's in it for me? And if they can't see how their job's going to change and their skill sets are going to grow, there's a little bit more resistance to it than what, the, what you would have with an early stage or a startup company. So, so Mike, I wonder if we can unpack that a little bit because yeah. you hear that a lot. It's people, process, technology, and, and technology, you always hear is the easy part, it's people and process. So, what does that mean? Let's start with the people. We're yep. talking, are we talking skill sets? Are we talking uh, about motivation? Are we talking you know, incentives? Yep. Talk about what you mean. Double click on, on the people piece of it. So on the people and skill sets, it really is about the skills and capabilities. So historically, um, you had domains, right? Domains of storage, domains of networking, domains of servers, and everybody had a skill and a capability. And as we start to move to this more flexible, agile world, um, the lines blur. And so I may have been a great data storage uh, analyst, but I didn't know a lot about networks, but I didn't have to. And so the, the reaching into moving out of your comfort zone and having to learn more about the store or more about the network and more about the server than you ever did is, is some, sometimes a frightening experience, number one, but also it's how do you get time to actually go learn those skills. So we have a whole series of educational services and a whole set of residency programs that allow um, folks in the traditional IT organizations to actually um, gain those new experiences and, and those new uh, domains that matter in the future. So what's best, best practice in your customer base from a, from a management perspective? Um, you know, the, the company says, okay, I got to retool, I got to yep. reskill, that's an investment that I have to make. How receptive are customers to that and what's your, you know, how, how do you sort of, I mean, obviously it's a good thing to do. Yep. It's a smart thing to do. It's the thing that the employees want to do. If you blow it, yep. you're going to have a mass exodus. So, 
For those who haven't had a lot of experience in that you know, area, what do you guys advise? How do you get them through that knothole? So, you know, as I said, we've got a set of advisory services around how do you think about, from a CIO's chair, how do I bring the organization along? We sometimes interact with the HR organization because it is about actually the human dynamics of bringing skill sets and people <laughs> yeah. along. The other thing that we've got a long way to go on is the tool sets. So just like the individuals in the IT organization who've got to change and they've got to be more adaptable and flexible and broader in their scope, our tool sets have got to change too. So we're spending a lot of time thinking about what are those integrated set of tool sets that if you got the people and you got the technology, now do I actually have the school, tools and insights to actually go manage this virtualized infrastructure. So do you, generally, do you find customers are receptive to that, that, that human resource transformation? Yeah, actually, the, the further we get into a conversation at the highest levels of CIO, they're 100 out of 100 times are totally receptive to it. It's always a question of how and how long. And this is the challenge, right? Because business now has an option, so the CIO has absolutely the right agenda to want to go change the, the rigidity of what they've built to be more flexible, but the business isn't waiting for them. And so the balance and, and the transition is how fast can you move an organization and how fast can you move an IT organization before the business stays with you or gives up and goes somewhere else. And when we talk about process, uh, let's, let's look at that for a second. Uh, we're, we're talking about IT processes, we're talking business processes, both. I wonder if you could so, add yeah, some color so, to that. Yeah, I can double click on that as well. So the, the short answer is it's both. It's IT processes as it relates to how you engage with a business. So if you think about you know, the h historical patterns of IT, I built a, a, an annual plan or a three year plan and I set out a set of some roadmaps that went on for three years. That's no longer the norm. The norm is a business wants to stand it up, wants to take it down. Some, some businesses use a lot with us, fail, we want to fail fast. And so you know, those processes of how you engage with IT and how IT becomes more flexible is one, you know, an IT process that's got to change. Inside the four walls of IT, how we think about service management frameworks and how we think about running the organization. And that's now a dynamic between, a lot of that is internally within the IT organization, but a lot of it's also how I integrate public clouds and how do I integrate third parties into my overall service framework. And those dynamics are changing as well. Mike, we've been covering uh, VMworld now. It's our fourth year doing theCUBE, and it really kicked off at EMC World in 2010, so we've been following the EMC story for yep. four years with theCUBE, documenting everything that moves, and certainly Dave and I go in, don't want to go into great detail now, but one of the things we loved about uh, with, with EMC is the transformation message, yep. right? Um, but we were just commenting on the intro, that's a that's done deal now, it's over, it's transforming, it's a verb, it's happening yep. right now. HP just had some earnings, people were pointing to that. Dave Donatello was recently moved out of a, a big position. Uh, servers, storage, networking are down, yet the market's exploding, yep. right? Microsoft's going to have a new CEO. <laughs> you know, these legacy installed incumbent leaders are shifting their sales, and yep. the wind's changing. So this is validation that the cloud is real. And uh, we heard uh, the executive from Brocade say, yep. follow the apps. Yep. Apps are now driving the infrastructure. Yep. And with virtualization, it's really a great industry to be in. So with that, what's the customer like? Are they scared? Are they deer in the headlights? Um, what are they, because it's happening so fast and yeah. IT doesn't move that fast. Yeah, I, and so <laughs> I, I wouldn't describe it, you know, I think for a while, um, we saw some uh, IT organizations sit back and say, yeah, I've kind of been to this movie a while and it'll come back my way. I think for the first time people have realized it's not coming back their way. And so I would call the other side are scared now. It's more of we're behind. So the they were deer in the headlights. Now yeah, they're like uh, yeah, tigers I, ready to pounce on the yeah, new cloud. Yeah, I think it's now how quickly can they, you know, how can I get some of that time back yeah. that I may not have been most, most reactive to. But it's clear it's a mandate. It's clear that it's a mandate. And that's when you see even our services from EMC, we're no longer really talking about services of how you implement our infrastructure. We really are talking about IT transformation. And that's a, you know, it is a services consultative led conversation that includes a much wider framework uh, than just the EMC core products. And so yeah. we're seeing lots of demand there. So obviously EMC is known for massive drives and you guys have huge accounts and you guys have all the big names. I mean, you've been supplying you yep. know, massive about gear and the storage is not going away either. So you know, more and more storage is kind of floating all the different corners of the, of the enterprises. But traditionally EMC wasn't on speed dial on services. Now yep. you guys are earning the reputation. So what are the, what's it like walking into those big name accounts that are, that are opportunities for you that are, you're, you know, they're right, you know, POs to yep. you guys for drives, and you know, you're like, hey, we want to talk services, which might be new. What do you say to those guys? Yeah, so a couple of things. One of the, the best things we did as a company was we started on this transformational journey many, many years ago. And so a lot of what you see is our offerings in the marketplace, whereas the intellectual property that we took out of our core internal IT organization on how we transform. 
So whether that be uh, financial metrics, templates for how do you think about moving from rigid to nimble structures, we took all that up and put that into intellectual property, which is now part of what we actually wrap in our IT transformational services. And that message alone for an IT organization who you can really look at and say, I can see a company, I can see their journey and their transformation, and I can see real, real evidence it made a difference. Um, that, that's the conversation we have almost in every one of our customers right now. What's the commonality amongst all your customer base? If you can kind of boil it down to a couple key things that are happening across industries around this, this uh, inflection point we're in, because you got mobile, you got yep. cloud, you got big data, you got security, all that stuff's happening. What is the commonality amongst all your customers right now? So it, it is this drive to get to the next generation application. So to the point uh, of the earlier about uh, find, follow the applications, we're seeing that uh, by industry, by industry vertical, uh, it is all about the applications, which then takes you into the secondary conversation of how do I get there with speed and agility. And business is, is again, accelerating, it's not slowing down, and so the second major uh, point is, is we really are starting to see this, IT is starting to become a broker of services because it's no longer uh, always going to happen in the four walls of their organization. What does agility mean when, you, when they say I want agility? What do they really mean by so, that? So a couple of things, um, a lot of times that's a cost conversation. I want to be able to turn it on, I want to be able to turn it off. And agility in that space in traditional IT just wasn't that <laughs> agile. Uh, it is the notion of fail fast, where businesses are, are saying, look, I'm going to go try this, and I, I don't want to talk about capital for the next five years, and I don't want to talk about uh, an infrastructure of people. I want to talk about stand it up, either fail or succeed, scale it if it succeeds, and shut it down if it doesn't. Is this one thing you could point to in this new era, of modern era, and, and as you look at the employees that you're hiring and the personnel that you call on in your customer base, is there any common trends and traits of the, the winners? Uh, what do you see in a, at the personnel level where you say, hey, you know, this person works for me, and that's the people we call on. What's the common trait of the winners? The, the winners are, are picking a, a, a place to actually show success. So uh, the ones we've seen not successful is when they sit back for three months and study how are they going to make this transformation. The winners, all common traits are is they will pick one app or one organization and they'll go after they'll that. They'll get dirty they with get, that. Absolutely, and that success starts to breed more and more success. Mike, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about um, that dynamic between going from IT shop to cloud broker and, and acting more like a cloud service provider. When we talk to members of the Wikibon community, practitioners, yep. we say, well, what are your big challenges? They say three things they point to, the top three. Uh, data growth, budget constraints, and, and data protection and disaster recovery. Yep. Those, are, those are three things that either cloud service providers are, are pretty good at, you know, they monetize data growth, they, their budgets are growing actually because yep. they're, they're selling services and they do pretty well at, at, at DR. So do you see the internal IT becoming sort of modeling after cloud service providers? H how are they able to even keep pace? Yeah, so, so we do. I mean, it, we, we, we see it as an IT broker. IT broker of services, which is going to entail things that are done within the IT shop, but things that are also done through third-party clouds, brokers and providers. Mm -hmm. We've got a long way to go on this data security and data redundancy conversation, and so we're doing a lot of work right now on what are the offerings and how do you help IT organizations maintain security across a hybrid environment where I don't control all of the variables on the other side. So we're seeing a lot of activity there. So we hear a lot about hybrid cloud. Obviously yep. VMware is playing that card. Um, I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit in terms of how customers are choosing workloads yep. to go you know, internal versus, versus external yep. and, and, and which ones are actually, are they actually moving data and there's, there's some complexities there that people aren't clear on. I wonder if you could you know, yeah, help us so, through so that. Simply put, I mean, and we have a whole series of offerings around, because uh, customers come to us all the time, how do I think about this? Uh, and it really is a workload by workload decisioning. We see it as a, uh, you've got to think about some applications and some environments are high performance, high integrity that you know, have a set of characteristics that you know, whether it's with a third party or internally, you have to be respectful of. That has a cost structure to it. There's others that say, look, if it went down for two days, it'd be painful but it wouldn't stop my business. And so we've got a whole series of framework and lenses that we take IT organizations through to start to think about the workloads themselves, the characteristics of it, and then we also carry the forward in the marketplace, what are the alternatives that would give them if they wanted to make choices for the outside. Here are uh, providers that actually would provide that level of quality of service. How do you navigate through all the choices? So you've got, you, is you've got a EMC live mobile services, yep. you're a service provider, you've got this ecosystem within EMC, you've got the Velocity Partners Program, yep. you've got your 
you're part of the federation, you know, VMware announcing its own, own cloud. You got customers who, some customers want to use Amazon. Yep. <laughs> um, how do you navigate through all that? So for us, I mean, it's, it's a question of EMC overall, our strategy around our partner ecosystem, um, we've been working on in the past year. And so navigating it, um, it comes on two fronts. Number one, we just see a lot. So across our customer base, when customers choose some of these third parties, if we don't have experience with them, we see the experiences up, up close and personal. And in some cases, I've got good examples where we went to some of these uh, providers and we actually said, we want you to be closer to the EMC uh, way of thinking and have actually signed them up as partners. And so we take a very active approach in the marketplace with it and quite frankly want to uh, have as many providers that have a certain uh, skills and capabilities and offerings that we would be proud to bring into our customers. Mike, my last question is what should we be watching for as the industry <laughs> goes through this transformation, you guys are sort of holding their hands. What are the key milestones that we should be looking at as independent observers, as indicators of of, that we're succeeding. Yeah, so I think we've moved up the stack, right, from server virtualization to you're hearing a lot about software-defined data center here at VM, VMworld. Uh, I, I think you know, the, the last uh, leg of that stool is when we start to see the tools and, and capabilities of monitoring and management that start to deal with this hybrid cloud environment because that is, we believe, the world and where it's going to go. Not one size is going to fit all and not one provider is going to fit all. And we've still got room, room to uh, grow there. Excellent. Okay, Mike Ola, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Great, services opportunity is huge. Obviously when you have disruption, you have an inflection point, you have transformation that is actually happening with proof points and carnage in, on the side of the road. <laughs> These big companies are, are retooling. We're seeing it in the industry. New upstarts are coming. People want services, they need direction. Uh, EMC, congratulates all your great work um, and all your support uh, at EMC World. This is theCUBE, John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>